हरि ओम लेट अस फर्स्ट बिगिन द ब्यूटीफुल ुंड महाका सूर्यकोटिम निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव शुभ कार्यु ओं श्री वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटिम निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव शुभ कार्यु ुंड महाकाय या कुंडेन्दु तुषारिहारिधवला या शुभ्र वस्त्रता या वीणा वर्णंडमंडितुटरा या श्वेत पद्मासना गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरु सहनावतु सहनौ भुन सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाश शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम टू ऑल विद द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ पूज्य गुरुदेव एंड विद द ब्लेसिंग Apunji Guruji, Swami Tejamanti, we, Ratri, and my son Jagdish, we thank you all for joining us for this beautiful study, the book called Kindle Life. Some years ago, when we both concluded our studies of the Vedanta. in the vedanta batch only one direction was given to us at the end you could say that it was the only adesh or anushasana swadhyaya pravachana abhyam na pramaditavya meaning that wherever you are in your life never ever give up the studies of scriptures the upanishads the vedas and whenever to whom ever it is possible to share this knowledge always do and this is the prime reason that we go to be true to the promise that we have given to our guru you are sitting here in front of you all trying to share a little bit a bit that we have received and what to speak 
of the book that we are taking up, Kindle Life? It is going to be a journey which all of us, every one of us, are going to enjoy and remember it for the rest of our lives. To take you further about the book, I would like Bachelor to take over. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, wonderful to have all of you here with me today. And we are going to start a journey of sorts by this book reading. The topic, of course, is spirituality. We all are here for this one purpose. And what we are going to study is the introduction of Vedanta. So what is Vedanta? Let us discuss today a little bit of a background of uh, something which is interesting, which will take us into our journey. So the word itself, Vedanta, means the end of knowledge. And where does this knowledge come from? It comes from the Vedas. So Vedas itself, in Sanskrit, comes from the root of Sanskrit called Vid. Vid means knowledge. Now in this world of ours, knowledge is principally of two types. One is the materialistic knowledge. And one is the spiritual knowledge. Most of us, throughout our lives, we only follow or are directed towards or lead our lives with the help of the material knowledge. Material knowledge means all the other knowledges that exist which do not speak about spirituality or religion. And most of our lives, up since we are born and our children, we study in different schools, take up different subjects, and ultimately take up different professions. We earn money from that. So all of this journey of our life is done with the help of material knowledge. While the spiritual knowledge takes us into the journey of within us, what does that exactly mean? What does it mean to go within us? So this I will try to explain in a manner where we give importance to some unseen forces that are there in our lives. Most of us believe that there is a God and we have faith and Shraddha in that God. God is unseen, nobody has seen God, but yet we develop and have faith in this God. But God is still a very unknown identity. Let us, let us speak something about whom we know, that is ourselves. Once we take birth, we have what is called a consciousness within us. And we all know that the moment this consciousness leaves this body, this body becomes a Vritta Shari. That means a dead body. And do whatever you like with it. It will not revive, it will not gain this consciousness. And this consciousness also is unseen. So in the materialistic world also, the scientists are always studying what is unseen. They want to know. But the knowledge that they see is always outside. The main difference between the spiritual knowledge and the material knowledge is, although the search may be constantly for the unseen, in material world, this search for the unseen is never ending and ever changing. The difference in the spiritual knowledge or the spiritual scientist is that he seeks for this knowledge within you, inside of yourself. And this journey is, has a specific end and also it is never changing. 
So instead of ever changing, it changes to never changing. And instead of having a never ending journey, it has a specific end. This is the main difference that we will have in knowledges of this time. So our journey is also going to begin with knowing about ourselves and the world that is surrounding us. We all will agree, each one of us has been through it. That in this materialistic world, there is always an upheaval, up and down. All of us are experiencing it most keenly in the current times, in the current moments. That however much a man might think that he has conquered nature or that his complete attention is on gaining and possessing more and more. The unseen forces are so powerful that they can instantly stop all your activities and change the course of your life. This unseen force but within us is what our discovery or our book is going to take us to. And why are we going to do it? What is the reason for, we, uh, for this uh, journey of ours? As I mentioned earlier, in the material world, when we are running after possessing things, after getting one, 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 one thing, we still realize that there is a shred of unhappiness, there is sorrow in the world. It may be disproportionate, for some it may be more, for some it may be less. But for everybody there is a certain helplessness that they cannot fight against. And for many of us, this makes our life very disbalanced. When we do studies of scripture, it gives us a very solid base a fundamental rooting of not only our history, our culture, but fortunately for us, of the knowledge that exists in this country. The knowledge which helps us to deal with all of this unhappiness, uncertainties of life, and which will tell us the true identity of who we are. When we look at our lives, essentially our lives are all about me and mine. And in this life of ours of me and mine, the I within us sort of gets lost or only takes up the form of ego and false pride. Many of us try to battle all of this. Each one of us has God within us. We are essentially very good people. But we are ignorant of our true identity. And this journey of Kindle life is going to help us understand who we are. Like in any other book reading that we do, we should know a little bit about the author himself. Of course. Yeah, Jagdish, can you enlighten us about the author? What can I say about Gurudev? Pujya Gurudev Swami Chinmayananti. Whenever we address Swami Chinmayanan, from now onwards, we'll address him as Gurudev only. That is how all Bhats call him Gurudev. Gurudev was a dynamic personality. He has, he has been hailed as the second Vivekananda. Why? Because we know. Swami Vivekananji was the one person who stood in the middle of America and he proclaimed to the world what Vedanta is. When he said, my dear, 
brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers of America. That means universality, the love and care that he had for everyone. A point in time, Vivekananda Swami Vivekananda said that I just need a hundred Swamis, sannyasis like me, like Vivekananda. I will change the whole of India. What did Guru Dev do? He created an army of more than 300 sannyasis. And did he reach only India? No. He went across the world. All over the world, he took the light of knowledge of Vedanta and brightened the hearts and minds of people. Gurudev was born in the south of India. He was born in the era of British, where India was divided because of languages. After independence, also the division of our country was done on language basis. Gurudev studied English, British High English. He became an atheist so to speak, because he didn't believe in anything. He didn't believe in any God. Especially in this so-called Guru Shishya Parampara or the Sannyasi order. Because he thought, they don't do anything. They just sit and they say, okay, give me food. I want to eat food. They live on donations. Upon his education completion, he got a job of a journalist. He went to Delhi. And there he got a beautiful idea. He set up to unlock the mystery of what these sannyasis and gurus do. In his mind, he was convinced they are all thugs. But for Gurudev's <laughs> career, bad luck. But for us, our good luck, Gurudev really met true sannyasi in his guru, Swami Sivananda. After receiving sannyasa from Swami Shivananda, we call him Maharaj. Swami Shivananda blessed him and sent him further for his deeper education of self-knowledge, Vedanta. Swami Tapovan Maharaj, Param Guru. At Swami Tapovan Maharaj's feet, Gurudev see the inspiration. What did he do? Did he sit there like many thousands of sannyasis? Just like Mother Ganga flows from the top of Himalaya to the end of the land of India. He got this knowledge from the recesses of Himalaya to every single person of India and to the world. And what did he use? What tool did he use? The same language. India was divided on different language. He spoke the Vedas, the Vedanta in the language called English. And he got the truth, the essence of the Vedas in English. This is the reason why you and me today and thousands of people around the world are able to understand and read and study this beautiful knowledge of the self. Gurudev wrote hundreds of books. Amongst all the books, if there is one book that which can be called as the master key to Vedanta, that is Kindle Life. Kindle Life is the most widely read book. Why? One, because in the scheme of studies in Chinmaya Mission, Kindle Life becomes the first book to study. And as a literally classic, the language, the thought that is put over there is just amazing. You all will see it yourself. This is a little bit that I feel I should have told you about Gurudev. About so the book uh, Yes, so Gurudev who started off his life as an a uh, person who wanted to expose the sannyasis, fortunately for the world and for us, he became a great saint who brought this knowledge to us and he did it in English. 
so that it was tremendous for us to be able to understand, absorb and learn from. There is so much more that we can continue, but this time our main focus and topic is on the book, The Kindle Life. Before we go further, I would like to explain to you for the scheme of how we are going to do this session. And so that we are prepared from tomorrow onwards. Today was an introductory session, as you can see. But from tomorrow onwards, there will be a specific method as to how we are going to go about learning. There, there are some requirements for the session. Uh, the first requirement, of course, essentially is the book of Kindle Life that you should have also with you. Either. In case if you don't have a physical copy, there is uh, the e-books which are available on the links that I think uh, have been sent yes. to all of you or most of you. If not, if you simply go on the Chinmaya Mission website, you will find the link to the Chinmaya Mission e-book. And over there you can purchase not only Kindle Life, but any other book also that interests you over there. Our sessions, of course, will begin at 8.15 and end sharp at 8.45. So half an hour sessions we will have. Every day we will try to complete at least one or two chapters. It depends upon the topic that we are going to take. In each chapter, certain points will be highlighted and you will be asked also to focus on those particular points. There will be n number of examples that you can connect and you will connect with your own life and life in general. And many, many things always appear to be very clear or get clarified by examples. And this will happen once we start reading the book. I would urge you to make certain notes, to keep writing certain highlights that we will be mentioning or certain particular words that, are there, that will be mentioned also. This will help you for your own self-study. We are going to follow this particular method from Monday to Friday. So it will not be an interactive session. You will essentially be listening to the book reading. You are encouraged to read the book earlier also, the first two, three chapters if you want, before our session. It is completely up to you. But you will have to read it along with us also. The system is like that. This is how you will know and understand it better. That way. And on every Saturday, on a different platform, which either we have already told you or it will be sent to you and definitely reminded to you on Friday. On Saturday, we will have an interactive session whereby we will actually be seeing each other and talking to each other. This will be for clarifying any doubts that up till the topic that we have completed or if there are any particular questions related only to the book, to the topic that we have covered up till then, we will answer those. But of course, you will have to send these questions to us earlier so that we are prepared. Any, whether WhatsApp or email, both will In be. WhatsApp or email, which you all have. Uh, can we send those questions to us by latest Saturday morning so that we can go through and give you satisfactory answers. So this also, Sunday. I think we have told you, on Sundays it will be an off. Monday. It will be time for you to contemplate, to see. Any study that we do, especially the spiritual studies that we do, are essentially individually for each one of us. It is for each one of us to realize our goal and to reach the particular goal of life. Now let me a little bit um, tell you something else about what we will, what you can expect to be studying in this book or what is the topic that you are essentially going to cover. The main topic in Vedas or also the theme of culture and the fact that human life, we all know this, is meant for more than indulging in pleasures. Though eating, drinking and enjoying are a part of life, we can never say that this is all that life is. Especially when we are born as a human being, 
the main difference between us and all other living species is the difference that we have an intellect and the ability to make choices in sanskrit the word for animals is pashu pashu again in sanskrit means the one which can see pashya it comes from the word pashya the pashya iti means the person who can see what that means actually is that animals react instinctively to what they see if they sense danger they will suddenly pounce out and run away if they see food they will just go up to the food and eat it so pashu are those who instinctively react to what they see and what is the word for human beings it is manushya it comes from the word mana so a human being has this faculty of mana or mind which is the main thing which allows us to think which connects us to our intellect and intellect mind and body these are the things which a human being essentially is blessed with so he is completely distinct from an animal due to his ability to think which is possible because of the mind or mana that is why manushya so this is something that also you can think about so these are two very distinct words now what does the manushya wants the manushya the purpose of human life according to vedas and that we all would say is to know what is the truth the truth or the reality behind this life behind our existence when we start asking these questions about ourselves or even if there are questions which come to my mind is why is there so much sorrow in the world okay i may be all right happy enough but can i be truly happy when the world around me or some people around me are suffering so much why is there constant sorrow why is there constantly some problem or the other coming forward what is all this in the world happening all these kind of questions naturally arise in our mind essentially so let us see if we can find some answers to our problems let us see whether we can solve some problems through the study of scriptures finally the most important thing about the topic of spirituality is that we have to have faith nothing can happen without faith faith in the unseen faith in that power because of which all exists and all happens whatever i am saying is it really true and what does it all mean all of these things also we will eventually find out once we are studying today we would like to end our session here on the introductory note by giving the final few minutes to a meditative prayer let us say we would like all of you who are watching us to join us in a very brief meditation session where we will just try to calm our minds close our eyes and say a prayer to end this session we will meet again tomorrow at 8:15 and we will begin our book reading tomorrow so hari om everybody and let me ask jagdish to end the session with a beautiful thank you back up right sure that you can change the clothes here
Thank you. 